I was just asked a question uh, by a reporter about an ethics complaint violation. Apparently, uh, there is a group that has filed an ethics complaint, a complaint against my administration, against me, against someone in this administration. I don't know. We're not allowed to see it, but magically, people like the intrepid Mr. Loftus over here has already seen it. What's interesting as well is that it apparently is being brought, all we do know, by the very people who are funded by our Attorney General using money that he received from Tim Longmire in contributions. Tim Longmire, who as a reminder, since it wasn't covered much, is actually now in federal prison. He was the chosen number two person by our Attorney General, chosen by him, selected by him to be his number two law enforcement person for the state of Kentucky. Number two guy. He'd previously run personnel for the, another governor who preceded me. It was a family thing, apparently. They liked this fellow. While he was delivering packages full of, of cash to the McDonald's parking lot in Versailles or wherever it was, he was being trusted as the number two law enforcement guy by our, our current attorney general. When some of you were astute enough to ask him if it seemed appropriate for him to be taking money from a guy that's now in federal prison in order to get elected, he decided, you know what I think I should do? I should give it to somebody that will be responsible with it. So what he said he's going to do is give it to this community watch group, or what's their name? I don't even know. Common Cause. He's going to give the money to Common Cause. Apparently, Common Cause is filing an ethics complaint. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to imagine it. No politics there. None at all. And interestingly, Tom's seen it, but we haven't seen it. We're not allowed to see it. But maybe being a good reporter and wanting to report, he'll report on what it says, and then we'll know too. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, I, here's the thing. It is a piece of real estate. Real estate is part of what we're talking about here. I'm happy to tell you. Let me say something right now. This, this house in Anchorage that you all are so fascinated with, somebody wanted to know, are you living there? I mean, I, I guess that was Sherlock Holmes that had asked me that question. <laughs> Obviously, I live there. That's why the state security is there. It's why I drive in and out of there each night. It's why my children play there, live there, and sleep there. Of course, I live there. The idea that something nefarious was done, and here's another thing I'll say, as long as you want me to talk, I'll talk to you. Here's the, here's the problem. You are destroying good people in this process. I appreciate, take shots at me. It's all fair game, even when it's an inside hack job like this where people give information to some people and not to us, and we have to wait and find out what it is. But here's the thing to understand. You're destroying good people in their reputation. Neil Ramsey, who sold this property, will see what the valuation of this. You all have reportedly, breathlessly reported on the value of this home. Have any of you ever even been to this home? You've flown your drones around the house. I appreciate that. You've flown your helicopters over the house. I appreciate that. But do any of you, are any of you real estate experts? Have you talked to people that are? Do you truly have a clue what you're talking about? These things will ultimately be adjudicated in the process of valuation. The valuations that you're talking about that are associated with it were supposedly sold at a lower price. It was sold at a price that includes a fraction of the land, none of the road frontage, tremendous restrictions and easements that are allow, allow movement through that property to the back of the property as well as blocking off the front of that property from the road. This is a 150-something-year-old house. It, it is arguably not even worth what was paid for it, let alone what it's being assessed at. Coincidentally, the very same uh, PVA who is very desirous of getting involved in this, because probably he's got an election coming up. This is, again, another political bunch of mumbo-jumbo, and it's a distraction. Does, do we really think relative to $5.8 billion in economic development, the creation of thousands and thousands of jobs, the idea that I live somewhere other than here or wherever is really that important? I appreciate you're interested in it. Let's let the facts come out. Instead of all the breathless hypotheses and the drones and the helicopters, let's just get some facts. Wait till we know what it's actually worth, and then you can make whatever assumption you want. There is a process to that. There is a valuation and an appeals process, and people who actually, unlike so many that are talking about it, know what they're talking about, that will determine the actual value of that property. But to disparage and take a guy like Neil Ramsey, for example, to the cleaners and to be lambasting him and noting that apparently he and I also are invested in another company where there are incidentally in Kentucky alone dozens and dozens, somewhere between 50 and 100 people own that company.
And apparently he and I are among those 50 to 100 people. And then you all breathlessly report how he's getting sweetheart deals for tax breaks that he's getting where he apparently an investment that he made in that company allows him to get a tax credit. And you've breathlessly reported on that. How many of you have written one story? You know who else got tax credits doing the exact same thing last year? Greg Fisher. Greg Fisher, the mayor of Louisville. I pick him just because he's also in politics. And you might have heard of him. I wouldn't have known it based on your lack of coverage of it. You all could look this up. This isn't rocket science. You know who else got it. You act like he invented You're like Neil Ramsey invented this tax credit. It's something the state has done for years. Many people, hundreds of them, have taken advantage of this. It's not illegal. It's an incentive to get them to invest in small companies. And like he did, I too, I invested in that company 10 years ago. He apparently invested in it last year. I've been invested in it for 10 years. I own a small piece of it. I'm a minority shareholder. There's 60 some odd owners of this company, I believe. But you all go after someone and destroy. This is a guy who is doing nothing but serving the people of Kentucky. And then you talk about, I see you all talking about pay to play. He got rewarded with a seat on the Kentucky Retirement System Board. Really? You think, that's a, you think that's a lottery pick? Does any of you want to sit on the worst funded pension system in the state that has been ignored for year after year after year after year? It's, it's nonsense. You all are so breathlessly misinformed about things, trying to vilify people, make scapegoats of people, in a complete abdication of responsibility. You will be shocked. You take a look at the list of people who received that tax credit. And you will be amazed how many of your friends and people who share the same political ideology of you, the very same ideology as all of you, which happens, and it's not a shocker, in most instances to be a little different than my own. But I will say this, you'll be amazed how many of your friends are getting the same sweetheart deals. Write those stories. Write a story about them. Write a story about certain people in the other party, including political people. You want to talk about, I mean, even as long as we're talking, you talk about my house, Taxes, just for the record, are owed on property taxes in the state of Kentucky on April 15th. After April 15th, they're late. You can pay them early and get a discount. You can pay them within a zone and pay a certain amount. You can pay them after the zone and pay an amount plus some uh, interest. Or they're straight up late and then liens start being filed after April 15th. Two, three months before they were late, you all, some of you, WDRB, thank you, excellent, great reporting, breathless reporting, blocking the street in my neighborhood, literally getting calls from neighbors, where you come and breathlessly report breaking news, hadn't paid my taxes yet. Very same day, the city, the mayor of that city, Greg Fisher, owed twice as much as I did, at the same time also hadn't paid his, also not illegal, also not late, also had chosen just to pay in the third zone, not the first or second, never wrote that story, didn't block off his street, didn't send a news reporter out there, didn't make his neighbors drive around to get into their own driveways. This is the kind of nonsense you think that, and you wonder why I don't take you seriously. It is so remarkably one-sided, and you vilify innocent people. You can take the shots. It's okay. This is part of what you expect when you run for office. But don't go after people that are serving the public. Don't go after people who are literally getting nothing, but based on your false assumptions, rumors, and allegations, are getting kicked in the teeth, and you all just pile on and try to outdo one another on that front. The bottom line is this, how do you expect to get men and women with any competence at all to actually serve on boards like the Kentucky Retirement System, to serve in the state legislature, to make the kind of decisions that people have to make day in and day out on your behalf? If you do nothing but try to destroy them, vilify them, smear and slander them based on absolute falsehoods, and a lack of ability to do a little homework and realize their falsehoods just in case you really believe them to be true, you're not going to get the best and brightest, which means you're going to get the less than best and brightest, which means you're going to continue to kick cans down the road, which means you're going to continue to get people who are not competent to lead, who are going to be in leadership positions, and we're all going to bear the brunt of it, and we'll have more regulation and more red tape and higher taxes and, and worse funded pension systems. Because, frankly, you punish the people who are capable of doing something about it. You ask anybody that is on that KRS board who the most influential people have been about actually making hard decisions and saving the pension system that, frankly, many of you are part of and all your friends are a part of. The people that are making the decisions to actually fix the pension system are the very same people that you're trying to destroy.
So why don't you take a look? If one of you intrepid reporters wants to, you know, Tom, you love to write a good investigative tale. You know, I mean, the, the wives, you know, my wife's doll, that one's been covered enough. The house certainly gotten a lot of coverage. You know, taxes on properties that I've owned, been a lot of coverage there. If you want to break some new ground, you want to cover something that hasn't been covered, why doesn't one of you pull a list of everybody who got a tax credit last year under this angel investment program? I don't even know the name of it. There were many of them who did. Pull that list. Scrub that list for names you know. You will be shocked. Write an actual one, not one-sided, but two-sided story about the people. And also draw people's to the attention to the fact they're not getting one over on the state. This is done so that we will encourage people who have the means to do so to invest in startup companies, to invest in small companies, so that those little companies can start with three people and suddenly have hundreds or thousands of people. That's the point. It's capped. It's limited. But it's amazing how many people who think like you do are the first ones in line to get that. Apparently, others are as well. I don't know that I've ever even been able to get a part of that. I don't know if it's a fairly new program. I think we've done it for several years, three years. Three, this is the third year we've done it. Take a look at that. Run, run a true story. Inform the public. You all complain too often that I won't stand here and do this, even though, ironically, the, the, the Herald leader, that fine bastion of you know, objective thinking that it is, Wrote, wrote an article this week or sometime recently about how I won't do this and talk to you. But the picture that they showed with the article about me not talking to people is me standing in front of a camera, some news reporters that were writing, and it was taken by one of their reporters, who also I took questions from, and this was just a few weeks ago. But then they used the picture he took at the conference where he asked questions and had them answered to write a story about how I don't talk to them. The reality is it is hard for me to take people seriously, and I'm sure it's none of you that are actually here at this moment, with some exceptions, but the bottom line is it's hard for me to take you seriously when you are so remarkably lopsided in your coverage, when you breathlessly do breaking news stories and block off the street in front of my house, when people who you happen to agree with, apparently, politically, are doing things that are multiples, the exact same thing, but eh, that's all right, because apparently they're the right people. Nonsense. Same thing when it's talking about people who are getting these special breaks. Be actual reporters. I know you're offended at the idea that a non-reporter would tell you how to be reporters. But the point of reporting is not to be opinion columnists. That has been lost, especially in a lot of our written media in recent months and years. And you now have people that are writing in the news column things that are, no matter how you slice it, Zippy the monkey could look at that and say that's an opinion piece. A third grader could look at that and say that's an opinion piece. But they don't even care. The, the, there's nobody who even has enough integrity in some of these publications to care whether it's an opinion piece or a news piece. I'm asking you, if you want to be respected, you want to resuscitate the fourth estate, you want to reinfuse a sense of confidence in people and respect from the people who read the things that you write and view the things that you put out there, then actually report the news. Don't put your spin on it. it trust the intelligence of your viewers and your readers. You can give your opinion, but if you do publish it as an opinion, don't write it as fact and don't get offended and outraged when I go around you and talk directly to people. Because the reality is I'm going to keep doing it because people deserve the truth. And if you won't give it to them, I will. And if you don't like what I'm saying, then come at it from your approach. But be objective and give them the entire story. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.